guys, I hope your week is going well. So I wanted to film another video talking about another type of oil because you guys really seem to enjoy these videos on different oils and every time I do an oil video, I get questions about other oils. So today I'm gonna to talk all about jojoba oil because this is one that is popular in a lot of products and skincare and I get many questions about. Jojoba oil is a clear golden liquid that is extracted from the seeds of the jojoba plant, which uh, goes by the name Simonsia chinensis. <laughs> if you ever see that on ingredient labels, you know you're dealing with jojoba oil. This is a plant that grows in the desert of the south, throughout the southwest United States, as well as Mexico. It's a very hardy plant, and the oil extracted from the seeds is wonderful to con as a consider as an oil to consider in skincare because it uh, is very hardy and resistant to oxidative degradation. It's very stable. Uh, using oils in your skincare, um, oils and skincare products, and putting oils on the skin uh, is nice in that oils are emollients. They help soften the skin, impart kind of a suppleness to the skin. But oils, namely plant oils suffer the limitation in that they degrade, they, um, are dam they undergo oxidative damage, and in doing so can become highly irritating and cause problems. Uh, so for example, a lot of people with acne prone skin may be fearful of a lot of plant oils, and the reason is that when these ingredients in the plant oils start to degrade, it can be irritating and that irritation can trigger an acne flare. Jojoba oil is pretty stable, unlike many other plant oils, and less likely to do that. A side note about using oils in skincare though, and I always encourage you guys, rather than doing just the plain oils on your skin, although that is super popular, to select products that are formulated with the oils because the products contain antioxidants, preservatives, things that will protect the oil from that degradation while you also get the benefits of the oil. So that is always, you know, my recommendation is choose a moisturizer that has the oils in it along with the preservatives to keep them safe. But jojoba oil on its own, it is superior to many other plant oils in that it is pretty, pretty hardy and pretty resistant to that oxidative damage. So stability is less of an issue and therefore it's an attractive ingredient in products and you will see it uh, used, it's been used traditionally as well as commonly in current everyday practice as a skin lubricant and as a hair conditioner. And one of the things that you will commonly see advertised is that jojoba oil is similar to sebum. Um, and I think that alarms a lot of people with acne because they know that their disease, part of what causes their disease is excessive sebum production. So why would they want to go putting an oil on their skin that is like sebum? Here's the deal with that and what I'll explain to you. Um, sebum, the oil that our, our, our skin makes, um, is plays a key role in the health of our skin. Even though it contributes to acne, it may, there are compounds in sebum that coat the surface of the skin and are necessary and essential for the integrity of your skin barrier. And one such ingredient is something called wax esters. They really help, uh, you know, come out on the surface of the skin and, and kind of make a nice coating on the skin and really just help with the skin barrier integrity. That is a key point of having skin is to serve as a barrier. It's one of the key, one of the key functions of our skin is to serve as a barrier. And those oils that are deposited on the surface of the skin can help in ensuring the integrity of the skin barrier and a key aspect of everyday skin physiology. Now, acne as a disease is a process in which excessive sebum production, other compounds in the sebum, they are broken down by the bacteria within the oil gland and those other compounds are inflammatory and that is part of what contributes to acne. It's not the wax esters and it's not the actual you know, function of sebum coming out on the surface of the skin and doing the skin barrier re repairing thing that is problematic in acne. So don't be alarmed by jojoba oil in the, in the claim that it is similar to sebum. Don't be alarmed that that may make it problematic for acne. It's, a, it's that it has a high composition of something called wax esters. So it's really a good repair option for any skin disorder where there is an inherent skin barrier defect. 
Skin disorders like that that have an inherent skin barrier defect include things like acne. Uh, acne is not only a problem of excessive oil production and plugging up of the pore, but there's also an impaired skin barrier that can lead to dryness, irritation. Irritation leads to inflammation, which further drives the acne. So jojoba oil, those wax esters, they help in restoring the skin barrier. So it's a good choice in, in that situation. Also rosacea, there is a skin barrier defect that leads to flares of rosacea, dryness, dull skin, etc. And eczema, by definition, is a disease of an impaired skin barrier in which you will have dryness and irritation. So these are, these are considerations behind the use of jojoba oil in skincare products. Also, seborrheic dermatitis. You know, seborrheic dermatitis, there's a skin barrier defect there. And jojoba oil has actually been, you know, is actually of interest in seborrheic dermatitis for helping in terms of some of the dry, kind of flaky patches. And as an ingredient, it's also appealing to consumers seeking a more natural, uh, natural approach. So it's wonderful not only in skincare products because of the wax ester components that can be helpful for the skin barrier, but it's also nice in hair care products, shampoos, conditioners, uh, straighteners, relaxers, because it helps to coat the hair shaft and it helps to cut down on hair breakage, dryness, brittleness, and in kind of coating the hair shaft, it also can reduce to a certain extent something called hygral fatigue, uh, which you all have heard me mention in other videos before, which is basically um, kind of the influx and outflux of water into the cuticle of the hair that leads, leaves the hair ruffled and damaged and the hair cuticle ruffled and damaged and susceptible to breakage. So coating the hair with oils prior to, prior to getting hair wet can really cut down on can cut down on some of that damage. So useful in that sense, and you'll find it, you know, in a lot of things. Because it is stable, it's appealing to manufacturers. So they'll put it in not only shampoos, conditioners, face washes, moisturizers, skincare products, uh, body care products, lotions. You'll also see it in a lot of fragrances and perfumes as kind of a carrier oil to the fragrance oils, to the essential oils. Um, so you'll see it in that manner. You know, a lot of perfumes might have jojoba oil in it. And you will also see it in nail care products. I mean, everything. It's, it's pretty commonly used. Some of the science behind the use of jojoba oil in skincare products comes from looking at animal models, specifically mouse models, uh, have demonstrated that jojoba oil actually has antioxidant properties that impart benefit to the skin. A limitation in animal models, however, is that animals, namely mice, their, their skin is much thinner than human skin. So whether or not those antioxidants get in to our skin and function well is hard to say for sure. Uh, but we do have that data, and we also have some, some data in lab models of skin cell, the human skin cells, kind of in a dish, showing that jojoba oil uh, is promising for accelerating wound healing. So it, it seems like maybe an oil that would be nice applied to a wound, although we don't have data to support that fully, but that is where it's of interest in kind of wound closure and healing and skin regeneration. However, jojoba oil, you know, it's natural, but all that is natural is not necessarily safe. There are reports of irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis to jojoba oil. Not super common, but does occur. So I gotta tell you guys that. Uh, there are reports of irritation in the scalp to jojoba oil, and there are reports of allergic contact dermatitis to jojoba oil and conditioners, as well as body moisturizers. Meaning when people use jojoba oil, they, um, they have become sensitized to it. And so when they use products that have jojoba oil in it, they will develop a rash as, as a result of that sensitivity. But it's not super common. Uh, I don't, there aren't a ton of reports, but they, they do exist. So be aware of that. You know, any ingredient can cause irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis. Nothing is foolproof, but jojoba oil does seem to be pretty safe. Because it is such a stable oil, it is less likely to degrade and it's a de degradation of oils that really makes them really makes them a loose cannon for developing irritation and allergy and sensitivity. Uh, so that makes jojoba oil possibly a little safer, but it's not foolproof. Um, so yeah, you know, personally, I have tried jojoba oil on my hair um, here and there just to see like what the hype was about. I also tried jojoba oil as an oil cleanser. I like to use an oil 
oil on my face uh, to break up water resistant sunscreen, mascara, dirt, pollutants, etc. from throughout the day. And then I wash it off with a gentle cleanser afterwards. So I don't leave oil sitting on my skin at all. Um, and I've tried it with jojoba oil and it does work uh, pretty well. Um, I think I talked about that in my video reviewing oil cleansers. I think I talked about that. Maybe it was argon oil I used, but I've also used jojoba oil. It works well too. And you'll see it in a lot of oil cleansers um, sold commercially. A lot of commercial oil cleansers will have jojoba oil in them. So it works well. Uh, the main difference between just using plain jojoba oil and using those oil cleansers is that the oil cleansers, the oil, the dedicated oil cleansers that you buy commercially often have a little bit of a um, emulsifying agent such that when you uh, put a little water on the skin, it will form a lather. So that's kind of the main difference between the two. But, you know, they honestly work really well at dissolving the dirt and stuff, either the dedicated oil or the, or the commercial cleansing oil. So that's what I can tell you about jojoba oil. I hope it answers all of your questions. Uh, it is a very good oil, but not without, not without risk. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.